Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our uh, Palm Sunday worship service today. Um, I know you're all nice and comfortable in your seats, but um, on Palm Sunday, normally I understand that we would gather in the vestibule and process in, uh, in uh, honor of um, the festive arrival of uh, Jesus to, into Jerusalem on this holy uh, day. So I would invite those who are able and who want to, to please come to the vestibule. Thank you very much. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you, through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, 
taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Save us as you promised. We will trust your word. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem, at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that was never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise. You may be seated, and I would invite the youngsters to come forward. All right. Good morning. You want to have a seat? Thanks for coming up. Today we um, celebrate a very special day in the life of the church. It's called Palm Sunday. We started out a little differently today in the back and we were carrying palm branches. And that's a reminder of what happened to Jesus on this Palm Sunday day. He um, entered the holy city of Jerusalem with lots of accolades and praise and shouts of um, honor to him. And this day also marks the beginning of a very special week called Holy Week. And on Friday, um, Jesus will go to the cross in great love for us. And then next Sunday, we gather for Easter Sunday to celebrate his victory over that cross. But the cross is a sign of God's endless love for each and every one of us. And so I brought along some crosses today to show you. This cross is one that has a lot of meaning for me. Um, a youngster many years ago gave this to me. Um, he was a little bit older than you guys, but um, he was in my confirmation class and youth group, and he made this for me. So it 
means a lot to me. Just, and he just made it out of basically two sticks. Let's see what other kind of crosses I have in here. Gosh, I'm getting tangled up. What do you think of this one? Can you see that one? I'm not quite sure where that cross is from. I'm thinking it might be from Ireland, far away. But I'm not sure about that. How do you like this one? It's a little different. Okay, someone very special made that for me. Sorry, because you guys didn't come up, you don't get to see them. <laughs> This one, pretty nice one. Uh, I hang that on the wall. Kind of a different one too with um, the tin. A wooden cross with um, a cross inside that cross. Okay. This one was given to me um, a couple years ago, and uh, I have always appreciated it. Some man made me that as a keychain. And just the other day, someone made that for me, just out of uh, a bulletin. <laughs> And this one, uh, you can pass that around. I don't know if you, see, you can look inside that, uh, what I think it's a, a ruby or something, but inside that there's um, something in there and I can't ever quite figure out what it is. But that cross was given to me many, many years ago and the person who gave it to me bought it when they were in Poland, which is a country very far away. And then, This cross, that's actually made from a palm branch, a little bit different kind of palm branch than we, we used this morning. Um, I couldn't tie that like that, but somebody did at one time. Again, these crosses, and every time you see a cross, it's a reminder of God's great love for us in Jesus, okay? And as a way to remember that, I have some stickers for you that have a couple crosses on. Okay, there you go. There you go. I'll get, let you hand them out. Okay. All right, thank you for coming up. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. How can things start out so well, so good, so promising, and then turn out so poorly, so badly? How can things begin with so much hope and expectation, full of optimism and excitement and enthusiasm, and then fall apart? I couldn't help but think about last year's Philadelphia Eagles football season. We started out 10 and one, sky high expectations and excitement. A surefire Super Bowl win coming up. 
But then the wheels fell off, losing five out of the last six games, and then finishing off with a loss in the playoffs. All of those high hopes and expectations dashed, crashing to the ground. We fans devastated. Certainly not so really critical and important when we're dealing with our favorite sports teams. But in the real world, in our daily lives, it is indeed much more critical, much more disappointing. Candidates, they're beginning actions in governing start out on high notes with, again, great expectations, only to quickly falter along the way, failing to fulfill promises made along the way. Leaders we look up to, family, friends, who occasionally let us down along the way. What a festive start to this week. On this Palm Sunday, such a festive day, a parade-like atmosphere. The long-promised Messiah is coming. The long-awaited Savior of the world is on his way to Jerusalem coming to the holy city, coming to take on and defeat the evil Roman Empire, coming as a conquering hero, coming to once again restore Israel's power, prestige, and might on the world stage. So much anticipation and excitement building the crowd swelling in size, growing larger with each passing rumor that he's coming, that he's on his way. Enthusiasm rising to a fever pitch. Yes, this week begins with wild, cheering, adoring crowds. Accolades raining down on this one riding in on a humble colt. But oh, how quickly the tide will turn. How quickly things will go south as the week progresses. How quickly the cheering crowds will sit, switch from chants of praise to angry and defiant cries of Crucify him, crucify him. How amazingly swiftly do we run from shouting joyous cries of hope to cries of condemnation. Jesus, you're an imposter, you're a fraud. Away with you, away with you. How fast we move from this festive day to shouts of crucify this king. How quickly we turn on this conquering hero to condemn him to death on a cross. In the 1990 Canadian film, Jesus of Montreal, which I have not yet seen, I have to figure out how I can get that on uh, some kind of a streaming service or something. I don't think I can go to a video store and rent it anymore. Um, but I was reading about this film. It sounds really fascinating. In the film, a group of young actors are commissioned by 
the local parish priest to come up with a more modern version of the passion story. The group in, of actors and actresses led by Daniel, who portrays Jesus, throw themselves into their roles. And as they study the passion story and as they begin to act it out, they're increasingly shaped and molded by it. The play gets very good reviews. Audiences receive it quite well. It even has good theology backing up the play, very much based on the passion of Jesus and his Good Friday death. But again, things start out well, only to turn south. Those in church authority begun, begin to be concerned that they might offend the establishment due to this play. They fear that the play will anger and upset important people. So they shut it down. In the final performance, Daniel as Jesus is fatally injured and rushed to a hospital and is laid out crucifixion style on an operating room table where his organs are given up so that the blind can see, so that the sick can be restored to health all across the globe. Roger Ebert, the late renowned film critic, wrote about this film. The teaching of Christ it has often been observed, would be radical and subversive if anyone ever took them literally. The film is an original and uncompromising attempt to explore what really might happen if the spirit of Jesus were to walk among us in these timid and materialistic times. Once again, a most holy week begins on a triumphant high. We join our hosannas and praises for the approaching king. Yet as the events of this week begin to unfold before us, as his demands of discipleship ring out, as we're reminded of being his followers and discipleships means a life of humble service. As we're reminded that he stoops and washes disciples' feet and invites us to follow in a ministry of servanthood for others as he calls us to love as he loves, to embrace those he embraces. We shout, crucify him, crucify him. How can things turn out or begin so well and turn out so bad? But this Lord has an even better surprise next Sunday. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us pray. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. Renew your good creation and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects, songbirds, and native plants. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Establish peace and justice among the nations. Hold to account any with authority to judge others. Grant that courts, legislatures, and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care, that they may know your love. We pray especially for those in need of care, including Dee, Jack, Claire, Terry, Brooke, Carol, John, Joe Sr., Gary, Gina. We pray for our homebound members, Paul and Joanne. And we pray for the family and friends of those who have departed, Dave Angstadt, Wendy and Michael Filbert, Kathleen Mitchell, Ivan Bishop, and we pray for all those on our prayer list and those we say now aloud or silently in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Give energy and joy to our pastors, deacons, worship leaders, and musicians. Bless baptismal candidates, their sponsors, confirmands, and teachers. Watch over those who travel. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Blessed one, our times are in your hand. Sustain us in discipleship throughout our lives and receive us into everlasting life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive these, the prayers of our hearts, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Peace. My pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs>
Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our it is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You created us in your image, and in the mystery of your great love for us, you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, born of Mary by the power of the Spirit. Led by that same Spirit, he was tempted as we ourselves are tempted. He proclaimed your forgiveness to sinners. He loved even his enemies. Despised and rejected, he bore the alienation of the world as he stretched out his arms on the cross. And by his all-sufficient sacrifice, he has drawn all people to himself, giving his life as a ransom for many. As we gather in his name and celebrate his testament, send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be for us the very body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, Redeemer of the world, who on the night in which he was betrayed over to death, he freely accepted, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When the supper had ended, he took the cup, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, All of you, drink of this, for this cup is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, by your Son's life-giving passion and death, his resurrection and his ascension into glory, our Lord Jesus continually intercedes for us and for all whom he has claimed as his own. As we now share this bread of life and this cup of salvation, unite us with all your faithful people in the forgiveness of sins and bring us at last to that eternal celebration of life at the Lamb's high feast. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus says, Whoever comes to me will not hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Come, for all now is ready. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And I have a few announcements. Please be seated. Please take a few minutes following the service to thank Pastor Wayne Muthler for being with us today. We really appreciate him leading us in worship. If you ordered salads from the youth group, you may pick them up this Wednesday at 5 o'clock. And just a reminder that next Sunday, Easter Sunday, the service begins at 1030. Um, Kim, I believe you have some announcement regarding Camp Mount Luther. Okay, so early registration is April the 15th for Camp Mount Luther. And to see you, Kim, and who else? Sarah. 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 Okay. <laughs> She's waving to me. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? Okay. And also, um, the St. Nicholas Choir will be practicing with the um, parish choir following church and following council meeting, I guess. <laughs> Any other announcements? Oh. Saturday, Saturday at one o'clock is the Easter egg hunt. And Okay, so youth, you're being called to duty. Try and be here at 12 if you can help Bobby out with the Easter egg hunt. Any other announcements?
hold them, let you do the heavy lifting. <laughs> At this time, um, I would invite our three youngsters who are receiving Bibles. Do you know their names? Uh, Braxton, Cyrus, and Oliver. Come on up. I want to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> On this very special Palm Sunday, you are receiving a very special and unique gift from this congregation. You're receiving a Holy Bible. Okay? Do you want to hand it to them? Again, this is a very, very special gift. It is the inspired and living Word of God. Okay? This book contains the stories of God's relationship to the whole world and to each and every one of us in Jesus Christ. Every time you lift up that book and you begin to read it and study it, I want you to remember that it is a gift from your church family. Your church family cares very much about you and about your journey in Jesus Christ. Um, they're here to support you and they're here to continue to walk with you in the journey. And again, every time you study this book, you read from it, you will, you will be renewed in your faith. You will be drawn closer to the Lord. You'll be uplifted for your ongoing journey in this life. So enjoy it. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pause to give you thanks for, again, this special day. And we thank you for this congregation and for each and every member. And we now give you thanks for these three youngsters as they continue their journey of faith. Bless these Bibles and bless each one as they read it, as they study from it. Just bless them as they grow in their faith and in their walk of discipleship. Bless them, keep them always in your care. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Blessings. Thank you. Take care. Again, what an incredible privilege to be here today with you on this festive day and um, to continue to just um, see the incredible enthusiasm you all have in ministry and um, the life that continues to abound here. And uh, so thank you for, again, the honor of being with you. And have a blessed, blessed rest of this Holy Week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.
in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. What an awesome day. <laughs>